So let's shift gears just a little bit. The purpose of this next segment here of this lesson is to help us understand and develop uh, some notation to use for functions, uh, for inverse functions, um, and to help you understand why we use the notation that we use for inverse functions. So this is one you can actually do on your own. It's kind of a little bit of practice from our last lesson actually involving composition functions. But this one's interesting because we have one function, f of x is 5x minus 8, and we are actually asking to compose a function in itself, right? So we're going to put 3 in and then continue to take that output and put it back into the same function. So go ahead and calculate these things on your own and let's see what you get. So let's see what you got. And you didn't have to do it you know, exactly the same way I did it here, but you should still in the end have gotten the same answers as me. So f of 3 is just equal 7, we plug it in. Now the cool thing about this is, whatever I got out of here, this is saying f of f of 3, right? So whatever the previous thing uh, I got, that is now my input, right? And the same with this one here, f of f of f of 3. Well, luckily we already did f of f of 3, so that was 27. So really what we're saying is what's f of 27? So this process in math is called an iterative process. It has what we call iterations. That just means repeating the same process on itself over and over and over again. And there's a lot of important mathematics that, that revolve around iterations, but uh, that's not for today. We're just talking a little bit about this because notation is going to be important here. So continuing on with the same function, let's just think about the same function, or really any function. If I had asked you, supposedly, to calculate f of 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 3, that's like super long, right? But again, there's a lot of situations where we would actually repeat a process many more times even than this. That's too long. This is where mathematicians get to a point that they say, okay, it's getting long. We need a new notation just to make our lives easier. Do you have a notation you might suggest? You can think about that for a moment. So instead we write f6 of 3. Now this, why I said it could be confusing, is because we also use this superscript to represent exponents. But I just want you to know right now, okay, if you see f with the superscript here, with the function notation, it always means a composition but repeating on itself that many times. So another fact to have in your fact list here. If f of x is a function, then fn of x is the composition of f with itself n times. Now that's going to be useful for us to now go back and say, okay, how does this apply to inverse functions? Thinking of a function as a machine, kind of like we've talked about before, is going to be super helpful here. And also thinking about the notation we just learned, fn of x, right, to represent those iterations. Well, let's think back of f of f of 3. So if I put 3 in, do 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 do, out comes 7. Well, if I want to apply f again on that, right, the 7 then goes back and becomes the new input, right? So that would be f of f of 3, or you could say f2 of 3, right? And if I got something out of that and put it back in, that'd be f3 of 3. So if I keep cycling through again, 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 that keeps adding one, uh, one jumping one number higher on my iteration notation here, right? But what if instead I want to pass 7 back through in reverse, right? Isn't that the inverse? We start at an output and we reverse the function. What that means is we're passing it through backwards and seeing what comes out. Based on this iteration notation, I'm curious if you have any suggestions for going backwards. Well, if you think about the numbers involved there, if every time I raise a number it goes forwards through, what's it going to be if I go backwards through? Maybe you guessed it, maybe not, but this would be using negatives. So another fact or notation to add to our list, the inverse of the function f of x is f inverse x. That's how we say it, but you put a negative one up there because it goes right along with that notation we're talking about with the iterations. And we could actually just find the inverse and then pass it back through again, and then you would just keep racking up negatives, right? But for now, all we're really focusing on in this lesson is this particular notation, okay? But that's the history and why we use this notation. So again, it's not exponents. Please keep that in mind. When you see this, you know, oh, that means the inverse function. Okay. So, another fact. I told you we were fact-heavy today. 
Okay? And this goes right along with this. These kind of go together. <clears throat> if you take the composition, right? So if you take f of f inverse of x, just think about it like this. If I apply a function, but then I reverse that, I get back where I started, right? So if I start with x, and I did a function, but then I, I took that, and then I just reversed it, I just get back where I began, right? So that's all this is saying. If I compose a function and it's inverse, I just get that starting number again. You can just think of it as like canceling out, actually. And even if it's in the reverse direction, right? If you started here, and you went here and back again, you're just gonna get back to seven, right? Or if you started here at the three, and you went forward and then backwards again, you just get back to three, okay? So you can think of this as the composition rule for inverse functions. And that's a super important rule that we're gonna go ahead and kind of apply and use right now for a moment. So to wrap up part one of this lesson here, let's take a look at the same function we were looking at a moment ago, okay? 5x minus eight. Well, if that's f of x, then f inverse of x, his inverse should be x plus eight over five. And hopefully that makes sense to you, right? The last thing here is minus eight. So we need to first add eight. And then the first thing was times five. So late at the end, we need to divide five, right? So add eight, divide five. I just want you to go ahead and show that f of f inverse of x equals x, right? Compose the two functions and show that it all unravels itself. That's the idea I like to think of. Kind of like tying your shoes. When you tie your shoelaces, we tie them in a way that we can just and it all unravels. Go ahead and do that yourself. So let's check this f of f inverse of x, and I'll color code this just to keep track of it, f of x is 5 times the input minus 8, right? So 5 times that whole function minus 8, and that whole function is this, right? So here's what we have, but we just need to simplify it. Watch what happens, like the shoelaces. 5 over 5, boom, boom, cancels out. So that leaves me with x plus 8 minus 8, and then the plus 8 minus 8 cancels out. Right? So everything canceled itself out, and it's in just the right order to cancel out. And all we're left with is x. So, that is it for this portion of the lesson. Now we're going to move on to the next part.